Welcome back everyone. Today I have a very important topic that we're going to discuss here and it is, well, it's your photographs. Got this DM today from Jason who says, Hey Ted, did you see the recent news on Petapixel about the WD MyBook live units that are getting wiped remotely? Have you had any thoughts on this or how photographers can protect their data? Thank you, Jason. Oh, I have some thoughts on this. The first one is ouch. So the WD MyBook live was an older unit that came out. It was a hard drive that you could access outside your network or outside your studio or home. So you always had access to your photos or your data. And so the idea was you had this little personal cloud. Well, this was a unit that was discontinued back in 2015. A security vulnerability was found in 2018. And guess what? It's getting exploited today. So if you have one of these connected to the internet, WD are highly suggesting that you unplug it now, which is really not what you want to hear from a storage company. But personally, I have not used this unit myself. For me, using one unit as a personal cloud is kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket. And if that's the only place that your photographs are living, then that's extremely dangerous because if anything happens to that, then you don't have anything anymore. I make my living producing these videos. So therefore, there are two assets that are extremely important and that's what I produce for my business. They are the videos that I make and they're also the photographs that I make. I think it was Arnold Schwarzenegger maybe who said, listen to me now, hear me later. Something like that. Come with me if you want to live. Anyway, this is kind of one of those videos. So a lot of the videos that I make, you can refer back to. Like if you have some questions on composition, you can come back to those. This is the kind of video that if you're coming back to this, it's probably going to be too late. That's how important this information is. So listen to me now. I'm going to show you guys how I have my setup here at the studio. And we're going to talk about some things. Now, this may be overkill for some people, but I'm going to suggest some smaller ideas if you have a more basic setup and you need something more affordable. The crazy thing to me is that I know photographers, many of them, who will spend astronomical amounts of money on lenses and cameras and they won't spend a dollar on backup or how they're managing their data. We live in a digital age now and with all the convenience and awesome features that technology bring to us, we also forget how fragile that data is. I don't want to ever find out what it feels like to have to lose all my photographs and start with nothing. I mean, I know people who have done that. It is devastating. So my point is, is deal with it now so you don't ever have to deal with that later. If you watch my videos, you probably remember I moved into this new studio in January. So I've been here six months now and it's been an enormous project to get this put together. But what we're going to do is do a little tour here and I'm going to show you how I have everything set up. So this room here is pretty much just like gear storage. I do a little filming in here from time to time. But the next room over is where my photo studio is being set up. And that is also where my NAS storage server lives. So come on in here and let's check that out. Okay, so this box here is pretty much the heart of the studio. So everything ultimately lives on this. So this is what we call a NAS drive or a network area storage drive. So this is a drive, think of it like that, that lives on the network. And so if you want to do this in a really simple context, you are going to use an ethernet cable to connect it to your computer, but this is where everything lives. So all my photographs are on here, all of my video files, business documents. This is pretty incredible. This is made by a company called Synology. This is the disk stations, the DS, 2419 plus and essentially this has 12 drive bays in it so there are 12 hard drives in here each one of them is 16 terabytes so i have 192 terabytes of data that i could use potentially so don't let this scare you away because most people don't need this much data and Synology does make this same device in much smaller configurations. So I would highly recommend that if you want to get a simple setup that's very affordable, get like a two bay drive unit, or I would actually recommend a four and you can grow as you need more. So not everybody needs 192 terabytes. I get it. So you can start with something that's much more simple. And as you do need more data, you can add to it. The other cool thing that's really important about this is this is set up in what we call a RAID configuration. So if you don't know what that is, basically it uses all 12 drives, but it has a way of distributing the data so you have what we call redundancy. So what that means is if one of these drives fails, I can hot swap it. So basically you power down the unit, you're going to get a red warning light and it'll tell you that there's a drive that has failed. You're going to power down the unit, take out the drive, put in a new one. And it takes a little while and it rebuilds itself, but you don't lose any data. And I think you can lose up to two on this device, which is very cool. You can also access this in different ways. So this is a NAS drive 
drive that kind of acts like a server. So you can do things like media streaming. If you have a television you want to stream movies to, or if you have maybe a device that you want to stream music to, you can set this up for all that as well. And it configures with Dropbox and other things, which is quite key. So what we're going to do actually is I want to show you the interface for this and how I get to this. So let's go into my office real quick. Okay, so back in my office. Now, I guess the Synology disk station could live in here. The only reason it doesn't is because it's kind of big and I am wired up for ethernet. So it's on the network. I just leave it in the photo studio back there. Cat6 cable, so it's pretty quick. So there's essentially two ways that I can get to my files on the NAS drive. So I can just do it through the finder. So if I open up a new finder window, we're looking at my video files here and they're organized. This is not super fancy. I just organize them by year, month, and then day. I can usually find stuff this way and sometimes I'll put descriptive text into like where I was or what it is so I kind of know what I'm getting at there are probably better ways to organize your files but this is just works for me the second way you can access it is through a web browser so this doesn't go through the internet it's just a local connection but this gives you the operating system and the Synology does have its own operating system which is very cool because when you have an OS you can run applications you can run extensions and there's a lot of really useful things that are on here so for instance I mentioned earlier if you want to set this up in a home environment to be a media streaming server if you want to stream video or stream music you can do that it's really cool it also has applications that let you do things like sync it up with Dropbox or another drive and this is really important because as great as the Synology box is it's just one unit and it's in one place now we do have redundancy so I don't have a huge risk of losing data but what if more than two drives happen to fail at once or even worse God forbid what if I had a fire or what if you had a flood and your data is on there you still risk losing it so there's an interesting way you can kind of think about this a lot of times you'll hear people refer to the three two one backup strategy and this is important because any file that needs to be safe they're going to be three copies of two of them are going to be on two different types of media and one is going to be off-site now there are different ways that you can interpret this and I found something that works really well for me it involves using drives here in the studio along with the Synology I have work drives is what I call them and then that goes in there for storage they get backed up and then it also backs up to Dropbox and you can do this with a variety of cloud services depending on your budget and what you want to do some of them are very inexpensive some of them like Dropbox are a little more expensive but you get a lot more features out of them I want to talk about how I have this whole thing set up, but real quick, I want to give a shout out to our awesome sponsor today, who are the folks over at Monday.com. Do you ever struggle with work being harder than it needs to be? Do you ever feel like you're getting bogged down trying to stay organized, keeping track of who's working on what? How did that project go over budget? Well, let me introduce you to Monday.com. Monday.com is a powerful but really simple platform that allows anyone to create and customize all of the areas required to run any aspect of their work. At the heart of Monday.com is WorkOS, which can adopt to many different kinds of workflows for project management, marketing, sales, CRM, even software development. I use it for photo scheduling and video production, and it's super easy to customize to my specific needs. I can use automations to make updates, notify people. Finishing something can actually trigger administrative tasks so I can spend less time working on my business and more time working in my business. What makes Monday.com really powerful is its ability to integrate with other services that I use. I can track files and assets with Adobe Creative Cloud or Dropbox. I can integrate my email list contacts and MailChimp. I can trigger notifications that are sent out through Slack. This is where the real power of Monday.com comes into play. It keeps all of my projects and tasks on track, integrates with services that I've already been using. It's simple, powerful, non-disruptive, it's actually fun to use and extremely effective. So what you need to do is try it for yourself for free. So if you visit monday.com using the link below this video, you can get a 28 day free trial and see if monday.com is right for you. So check it out and I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at monday.com for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about how I have my workflow set up here. I've got video files and I've got photographs that I have to back up. So what I do is I work on these two drives that are on my desk and these are just Thunderbolt drives. They're both RAID configurations, so there's a little bit of safety there, but they also get backed up at night 
connect to the Synology server. The bottom drive is my video drive that's just dedicated to video projects, and the top one is my photo catalog. And so I tend to work off of those, and that's just that one copy. At night, they get backed up to the Synology server, and then it handles stuff in the background, and they kind of work differently depending on photos or videos. So just talking about video files, it's really simple. So I'm making YouTube videos, and I have all these files at B-roll. I have a video of me talking like you're seeing now, and then I actually manually manage that because when I'm done with a project, I don't need to save everything. And kind of my rule is I keep all of my B-roll and I don't save talking head footage. That's usually not something I'm going to use for anything more than just the one video that I did with it. And then I take the master video that I make, so this video you're watching now, I will have a master file for, and then that goes into a specific place organized by date on the Synology box that backs up into the cloud. So it's really easy, but it does require a little bit of management on my end. For video, it's not that bad. Now for photos, it's a little bit different and I have kind of a deeper setup that I have worked out that I think works really well. So I use Adobe Lightroom Classic for my image catalog. Now most of you guys know that I like to use other applications as well. I like to use Capture One for certain things. I like to use Luminar AI for certain things. And so typically what I will do is I will export the files that I need and then I'll just bring them into those applications because I've just found when you're dealing with several hundred thousand images, Adobe Lightroom really just does the best job in terms of metadata and keeping everything organized. And you also get access to Creative Cloud. So you have the cloud in there as well. And I do use that for certain things. I'll get to that in a second. So Adobe actually recommend that you don't try to run your catalog off of a network area storage because of speed issues, etc. So what I do is I actually run it on that local disk that I showed you. So this is just a G drive that sits on my desk. And the way I have this configured, and there's actually two ways that you can set it up, is that you can ask the Synology server to just mirror whatever is on that drive. So it acts kind of like Dropbox. So when a file changes, it gets added to or taken away. It just mirrors all the changes onto the Synology server, or you can have it do scheduled backups. And so I love that there are two options with that. Plus it just gives you a solid backup option. So that's really cool. And then Synology will take it into the cloud from there into Dropbox. Now I also use the creative cloud part of Adobe as well. So let's say that I'm at home and I'm working on some photographs or I'm on the road and I just want to start editing and maybe all I have is my iPad with me. Well, what's cool about Adobe Lightroom, the cloud version is that any point of entry in that, what it will do, let's say I'm on my iPad and I stick a card in there. So it's going to take those raw files and it's going to upload them to the Creative Cloud. Next time I'm at the studio and I launch Lightroom Classic because they're synced together, it's going to download those raw files so I don't have to have them in two places. The other thing that's really cool is I can start making edits and I can kind of get things into shape the way I want them and then it brings in the edits as well because it's a raw editor and it just does that non-destructively and it's pretty cool. The downside of this, of course, is that Adobe Cloud services are not cheap and I don't have anything fancy. I just have the 100 gigabytes that come with my plan. That's all I've really ever needed. And I don't know if I were doing more extensive traveling or something, I would probably have to address that at that point. But this allows me just to be able to work on the go and get everything in there. When I delete things from the cloud, they don't delete from Lightroom Classic. So I have all my raw files that stays here. What I do is I just clear that off when it starts to fill up and when I don't need stuff anymore. It's a really cool way to go. Plus, I love being able to just create a gallery, make it public. So family photos, maybe something for a client, whatever that is. And people can just review that straight off of Lightroom. It's really handy to have. Of course, Capture One have announced that they have a mobile version of Capture One that's coming. So it'll be interesting to see if they do anything cloud related with that, because that's kind of the key that needs to tie in. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're doing edits in one place and then they're not centralized. So I would be able to edit on my iPad, but then I'd have to re-edit when I came back to the studio and that doesn't make sense. So the way I do it, I just like to use the cloud for that and Adobe really has the best offering at this point. I realize that this is kind of a luxury setup that I've got here and it's taken me a long time to get to this point. I didn't start out this way and whatever you decide to do, keep it simple, keep it something that you can maintain effectively and then make sure you have copies backed up in various places and that your data is safe. So moving into this office six months, months ago, it's been an enormous amount of work and especially doing the network. We had like this building was converted into an office like sometime in the 1980s. And so there were like phone cables and stuff coming out of different holes in the walls, but there were pipes in the walls. So we were able just to pull all that stuff out and then throw ethernet up there. It goes through the attic into various rooms 
Every room has at least two jacks in it, plus I have Wi-Fi 6 here, which is really nice. But you need to have something where it is just easy for you to get to your stuff. And I can't harp on this enough because if it's not easy, you won't do it. And if it's too complicated, you won't do it. So you need to find that sweet spot of what works for you so you don't lose data. Back to the WD story, I don't really know what that box did. I never had one, and it's just kind of an all eggs in one basket solution, and that is what you want to avoid. would love to hear what you guys have to say, so drop me a comment below. Catch you in the next video. Until then, later.